think about things like payments, payments acceptance, payment processing, right? You think about just simple data entry, you know, and how manual that is today and time consuming and, uh, you know, the hundreds of hours businesses spend on that. How do you automate that? How do you automate their bank reconciliation, you know, their bank's uh, transactions, um, you know, day in and day out and so that they automatically reconcile. Hello, my guest today is Chip Mahan, or Mon if you're in Ireland, a corporate executive with 20 plus years of leadership success, working with American Express, First Data, and now Chip is the global head of FinTech, payments and banking with Sage, with expertise in sales, strategic partnerships, client success, technology, travel, operations, payments, and re-engineering in Fortune 500 companies. Chip, you clearly understand what's required to elevate a multinational business and take it to the next level. Welcome to the Embedded Podcast, Chip. Thanks to me. It's great to be here. I'm really excited. Yeah, awesome. Thanks. Thanks for joining. Um, so as I was looking at everything and we're doing our notes, seeing what was going on here, I get onto your LinkedIn. And although I've known you here, uh, Chip, I'm like, oh, interesting. In 1988, while I was, um, you know, giving away my age here, eating cereal at my mother's breakfast table at eight years old, <laughs> you were a U.S. diplomat. I would love to hear a little bit about, you know, the personal side of Chip, how he got into becoming a U.S. diplomat, and then what we learned that took you on this journey to uh, the payments industry and banking ecosystem. Yeah, I, look, I... Uh... It's always an interesting career when you work for the U.S. government. And uh, I had the distinct privilege of doing that for many years in my career. And one of those stints was as serving as a diplomat at one of our embassies overseas. And, you know, it's a it's a great opportunity. It's a great experience. And how that transitions into business, quite frankly, is, you know, being a diplomat and working in a foreign country and and, and policies and things of that nature, you know, you you get to learn a lot about people and you get to learn a lot about how to work with people and how not to work with people and what what drives them and motivates them in their business uh, and and or for their government. And, you know, transitioning into the business environment, I, I was able to take those skills that I learned there uh, into the business culture and, and really, you know, uh, elevate my game, if you would. Uh, through those learnings that I'd had in that experience, but yeah, it was a it was a tremendous opportunity to serve for our country. That's awesome. Did it allow you to travel the world, travel the country, take you to all sorts of places? It took me to many. Let me just say, to many interesting places. That's awesome. That's awesome. And then on the personal side, uh, travel is also something that I understand you enjoy doing. Uh, is that a fact? <laughs> yeah, I love to travel. I mean, gosh, I mean, you know. You know, business travel isn't always the best because people think it's exotic and great. And you, basically you're in meetings all day. You don't really get to see a whole lot. And and uh, and but, you know, travel, leisure travel. I love to travel. I love to see the world. I love to learn about new cultures and see new, you know, how people, you know, thrive and operate within their own countries. Yeah, that is awesome. I know even looking up and working with Sage for quite some time, you know, it's like this microcosm of society, if you will, with all, you know, I'm a global organization, I believe it's 11,000 team members uh, worldwide, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, to see that, and you're, you're engaging with all these various cultures, but then also business is done so much differently throughout the globe uh, with several different challenges. So I'm sure that was extremely valuable to have learned that side of, of the world as well. Um, so, you know, today, one of the things that we really want to start to, to talk about is this thing called ERP, um, Enterprise Resource Planning, an interesting term. I would say that um, I, you know, being in the merchant services business for quite some time, the first time somebody said they're going to an ERP, I, I don't know that I was not Google. I was actually Googling it. What is this ERP thing? Does a terminal connect to it? Can I integrate to this ERP system? And it was like, whew, like I guess the other shocking thing at the time was the, the, the API thing. I mean, 
ERP, B2B, API, ABCD, EFG. I mean, there are so many <laughs> things happening in the payment ecosystem. And we started to look at really the last three years of the ERP and B2B space and how much has shifted because it's become so much more familiar. We're seeing this almost injection of ERP occurring. We want to get your take on why and what has changed in the last three years to make something that was so uncommon, ERP, Enterprise Resource Planning, which somebody might argue where do they even come up with that? How does that tie to what it actually does? And what's happened over the last 36 months? Yeah, um, to me, I think you're right. There have been a lot of uh, transformation, significant transformation that the you know ERP systems and B2B have undergone in the last three years. And I think it's been driven mainly by the uh, technology advancements uh, and the shifting market demands. Um, so you think about the increasing need for agility and resiliency in business operations. And so some of the things that I see happened over the last three years, some of the trends that I've seen in the last three years are things like, for example, the rise of cloud-based solutions, right? Um, which really provides the, the uh, businesses enhanced accessibility and scalability for that matter. Um, I think about things like uh, the integration of artificial intelligence and machine learning uh, for you know, providing businesses with predictive analytics and, uh, auto and automating their workflows. Um, I think about, you know, there's been this emphasis on, you know, the whole user experience and customizing that user experience because companies and, and employees in those companies are demanding capabilities and out of their ERP system that, you know, needs to serve their needs and their purposes. And so meeting those industry demands is something that has been something over the last three years that I think has taken a transformation. And the last one that I can think of off the top of my head, um, you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about what happened during, you know, the uh, pandemic. Um, and what happened there is really what I call the acceleration of the digital transformation. And I've talked about this a lot in the past. And really it's about, you know, the need for around ERP systems to be, built, be more robust, to be more flexible and in order to support not only remote working, but also supply chain optimization and real-time decisioning. And, you know, one of the interesting things since joining Sage I've seen is, um, you know, uh, that Sage has really evolved towards this shift in transformation over the last three years there by providing things like enhanced cloud solutions and offering to our customers to make, to provide more scalability and flexibility. Also, um, incorporating artificial intelligence and advanced analytics to provide very in-depth, detailed business insights. And so as part of that, you know, uh, the partner, uh, a partner ecosystem uh, embedded into your core financials or ERP system becomes a real integral part of the strategy. Some of the things like, for example, we do with Fortis um, and uh, Fortis payments. And so, you know, when you think about collaborating with partners, they provide a crucial and critical element to solutions for the other jobs that need to be done outside of your core financials. So not only does having a, a very strong and broad partner ecosystem give you uh, enhanced technology capabilities, but it also extends your market reach, if you think about it, right? It, you're providing solutions for companies that they get off of a single platform now. And, it enriches for your ERP system, the product suite that you bring to market. So having this strong ecosystem of partners helps us address, or in any ERP system, address the business needs required that we're seeing from companies out of ERP systems today. Yeah, absolutely. And I know from a, a, a Sage perspective, as an example, you know, the marketplace experience is, is so dynamic, but also important in that ecosystem. Um, we see, you know, obviously from Sage 50, 100, um, 300, you have Intact, you have, you know, these products that are, you know, X3 as a matter of fact as well, going all the way kind of that enterprise uh, level. The, this, this product suite is, is highly complex and I would imagine also complex to maintain. I mean, back to my point of 11,000 team members across the globe, all of these products, pro putting out product and enhancing product is very challenging. I mean, you know, I joke, you know, 
I got an uncle that has a little coffee shop and he's got five employees. He doesn't know what to do at times. Somebody doesn't show up and making sure the cups are there and so on and so forth. So when you start to see the amount of scale, but then also the focus on the customer and merchant, it's really a amazing dance uh, to witness. Um, so with that being said, thinking about that, the challenges at that merchant level, because ultimately that's who we're talking about here. And you mentioned several things from the cloud side of it and the advantages that they have, but what, um, what challenges would you say they are actually really facing in today's environment from an ERP perspective and those key features. And, and again, the connectivity seems to be the one of the largest drivers and then the technology's ability to drive that connectivity. But what is your uh, um, uh, perspective on that? Yeah, I think, uh, Timmy, when I think about that, you know, think today merchants, businesses as a whole, no matter what size they are, navigating, you know, some very significant challenges with ERP systems. And you're right. You know, one of the things you mentioned is, you know, scaling operations, for example, like you just talked about. Um, you know, that's a, a critical element of some of the demand that we're seeing and some of the challenges. It's around managing complexity, you know, no matter what size of your business. You know, you talked about your uncle, for example, um, you know, with five employees in the coffee shop, you know, his complexity grows when one of those employees don't show up for work. Right. And so how do you manage that complexity and things? And, and really, one of the other elements that I think are challenging right now with ERP systems is the ever-changing landscape around regulatory compliance, you know, um, and you've got to make sure that your ERP platforms support all of those regulations, that you're fully compliant, um, because we're talking about, you know, financial um, uh, workflows and, and, uh, and it's important that, you know, that you're compliant in everything you do with the regulators. So what I'm seeing, I think, around the challenges is there's a demand now for, you know, operational efficiency through automation. So you talked yeah. about that a little bit, you know, and just even simple tasks. So a lot of the stuff that I'm involved with on a regular basis um, today here at Sage, so you think about things like payments, payments acceptance, payment processing, right? You think about just simple data entry, you know, and how manual that is today and time consuming and uh, you know, the hundreds of hours businesses spend on that. How do you automate that? How do you automate their bank reconciliation, you know, their banks uh, transactions, um, you know, day in and day out and so that they automatically reconcile and, you know, AP automation and the list goes on and on and on and on. But basically, I think the challenges are around modernizing and optimizing workflow. And um, so those are the things that I think that are or the ERPs are, are looking at in terms of solving. Yeah, it's it's a uh, it's a great point. You know, you we see as you know, cash has declined, credit has increased, uh, ACH, EFT banking has increased as well, and then all of that logging needs to happen somehow. And I've witnessed you know firsthand how you know, the Sage products do that and simplify those experiences. Everybody's talking about this invisible payment experience. And, and it's not just for payments, it's the entire ecosystem needs to feel invisible. A cardless society, one that, you know, 10 years ago, we might've said, ah, cardless, like, how do you have no cards? Like, how would that work, not having a card? You know, recurring payments and putting a card on file, putting your bank account on file, like things like that have become such an, a convenience to the extent if I'm on a website and I'm making a purchase as a consumer and it asks me for my payment data, there's a high chance I'm going to abort and go to Amazon and make my purchase where I don't have to enter my payment data. Like, so like every step is being affected and you see the cellular phone as consumers, the cell phones getting involved in that with biometric payments. You mentioned AI as well and how AI is going to affect the ecosystem. Do we see that as like a, you know, simplify operational processes, simplify processes. And I know we're looking to the future. Nobody exactly knows how that's going to come, come together. We're seeing forms of AI simplify things, but is it going to be a big disruptor to the ERP space or just a nice tuck in and add on as technology continues to grow? I think, look, AI and generative AI are really um, at the forefront of revolutionizing the way business operate, right? Uh, it's not just 
AI that allows you to automate your workflows, um, it's, it's much more than that. It's about having a system uh, that can generate decision-making uh, and, and point you in directions to provide solutions, not just automate the workflow. So for example, you know, I think about, um, you know, uh, something we're even doing here at Sage uh, that we uh, launched called Sage Copilot using uh, artificial intelligence. And basically think about a world where you as a business are operating your business and your, your ERP platform system through AI generates a response to you to say, hey, guess what, Timmy, your cash flow forecast shows you're going to be short on cash in 45 days. You better think about doing something about it now. And not only does it say think about doing something about it, but it tells you here's a solution for you. Here's four options for loans that you're eligible for right now or grants based on your business. And not only does it give you those options, but it also sends all that information to your accountant, your trusted advisor. And then, oh, by the way, it schedules an appointment for you automatically, right? And so now you have an appointment with your trusted advisor to have this conversation about a, a business loan or a grant that you're eligible for. And you can have a much more informed, collaborative decision uh, conversation to make that decision for your business. So that's really where, honestly, I see, you know, AI and generative AI really moving towards, you know, as, a, as an example in business. That is a super cool example, by the way. And I'm, you know, I think about like ERP and, and what it's becoming. I feel as though, and you know, can, this could be debated by folks, but it's becoming the brain of the business, if you will, like the central, you know, uh, center to connect, you know, internet of things, you know, to all the things that allow a business to run. I think to witness what's going to start to happen here with AI, and these are not, like you said, you, you all have this now, this is happening. It's not something that is 10 years from now. We're seeing advancements that are happening daily, uh, monthly, very quickly in the AI world. I was actually just speaking to somebody about, I feel behind already. <laughs> like I'm trying to like, I need to spend like a Saturday just messing with all of the AI and I've made my attempts and it is uh, overwhelming to say the least. But, but understanding that kind of, you know, um, reverse engineering of where it's going to take us and how simple it's going to help businesses operate um, is certainly exciting. Uh, with that being said, as you're seeing kind of the future of not only the, the AI in which y'all are, are, are putting in place, the ERP space and the strength of ERP and the penetration of market, there's data suggesting this really large uptick in the businesses that are going to be adopting uh, ERP. We know how y'all have looked to help these businesses globally. And anything else that you would like to add as it relates to what is happening in the space today, how you're seeing uh, ERP continue to transition and evolve? Um, yeah, I think there, there clearly are some trends ahead. Um, you know, we talked about AI and generative AI, and I gave the example that that clearly is a, a move forward trend that's happening across the ERP platforms and, and, you know, and we've embraced it heavily here at Sage. Um, you know, some of the other things I think about is ERP uh, systems are becoming more of platform. Uh, they're much more of a platform play in my mind now. And you think about, you know, when you run a business and part of our goal is to break down the barriers for, for businesses, right? To make their jobs and their lives much more uh, efficient and uh, effective operationally so that they can get on to do the things that they love to do. Um, when you think about that as a platform, there's hundreds of jobs a business has to, has to do day in and day out, week in, week out. Um, and you know, your core financials are just part of that. Um, they're a big part of it. Don't get me wrong. And at the heart of the business is the core financials and your ERP system, but extending that platform into a broader ecosystem, similar to what I talked about, where you have these integrated solutions as part of your ERP system, whether it be payments acceptance, whether it be payroll, whether it be um, supplier payments, whether it be you take your bank transactions instead of doing month end close uh, manually, those come in on a daily basis. They auto reconcile back into your general ledger, eliminating that manual entry and allowing those employees to really be focused on more strategic types of efforts for the business. 
Um, you know, and, and you have a, a very broad ecosystem of all these different integrated solutions where a customer doesn't ever have to leave the platform to go, you know, take care of their business. So I think sure. about even like something as simple as AP vendor payments, right? So in your accounts payable workflow, the last leg of that journey is making the payment to your supplier. Traditionally, you have to leave that platform to go figure out how you're going to pay your supplier and then bring that transaction and manually rekey it back in. But today, through these platforms and these integrations as a platform, you have the ability to never leave the platform or your software, your ERP software. Uh, with a click of a button, you're able to make that payment to the supplier without ever leaving, and it auto reconciles back to your, you know, your GL. And so, these are some of the things you know. Having these, you know, uh, a platform play, I think, is really part of this broad ecosystem of partners that we're seeing, and there's going to be a heavy trend with that. And the other, one of the other things you mentioned, we talked about a little earlier, is you're right. Cloud-based solutions are really are really taking off, right? Yeah. And you know, because it provides scalability, flexibility, accessibility, you can be working anytime, anywhere. Your data is always there, available for you. You know, it's versus the old days of of of, of it not being. And uh, I see that there's a huge growth in in the um, rapid rise of cloud based solutions. And so, the other thing I think around ERPs that we haven't gotten into is, and I see this a lot in the in in the market is this need for specialization by vertical. Um, and so when you think about it, you know, not all businesses and not all industries are the same. They have different needs, sure. they have different regulations, they have different compliance structures. And so you think about, does your ERP system provide solutions for them, you know, for all these different verticals? So you think about specialized verticals like healthcare. You know, there's all kinds of regulatory requirements, HIPAA requirements and all kinds of things that you got to adhere to and um, that, you know, does your, does your ERP system support that? I think about things like non-for-profit, um, very different financial structure for a non-for-profit than it is for a regular business. And Absolutely. so again, does your ERP support it? And, and even things like construction and real estate have specialized needs, you know, and, and you need to have the right uh, ERP system that can support all of the solutions that are, are specific to these vertical industries. And so I think that's something else that we, uh, we're definitely seeing as a move, you know, now and towards the future. Yeah, that's a great point. Uh, today's offering with technology has allowed us to go from buying a suit off the rack and wearing it versus a very tailored approach. And that's the idea here that prior it was, this is the technology, you fit into it. Go what you, do what you have to do. Pants might be a little big, jacket might be a little long, but at the end of the day, that's what you're gonna wear. Um, and now you, we have this really nice tailored approach of this is my business, this is how I run it. Now tailor it to us so that we can really flow. And I think it's an amazing thing because these ERP systems are actually able to take you in any one of these verticals just at a starting point based on that choice of the plethora of options that Sage offers, right? Like, hey, look, this is more for me. Even then that's 80% of the way and the other 20% starts to become through the marketplace and customization and all those different things through um, that, that um, unique experience of tailoring that I think is really valuable in today's uh, environment. That's awesome. That's really great. Yeah, no, that's a, uh, to me, that's a great analogy, the, the tailoring uh, of a suit. You're, you're absolutely right. I hadn't thought about it that way, but you're absolutely correct. It is taking what's there and, and making sure that you can make it uh, very unique and specific. We talked about, you know, the emphasis on user experience and customization. We just talked about vertical solutions, right? And, and the ability um, to surface up other solutions outside of your core um, financials through a broader ecosystem. And, and all of those become extremely important to businesses when they look for a solution out of their ERP systems. And, and those that, you know, can, can surface that and provide those types of capabilities are the ones that are going to really help optimize and, and grow, uh, businesses on a worldwide basis. So, yeah, it's really, it's, you know, this space is really exciting because it's ever changing. It's always transforming. Um, and uh, it's really exciting to be part of that change. Awesome. Thanks for that, Chip. Um, looking forward to see how the ERP industry continues to evolve. 
I'm blessed to be a part of it for sure. Uh, and, and to be working with, with, with you um, and, and, and the team. A little bit about Chip. Really would love to hear about you, see that really cool uh, background behind you. What does Chip like to do? Yeah, it's uh, I've got. I don't know if you see the fire going. It's a little yeah. chilly up here. A little chilly up here right now, but uh, so it's warming my back while we're talking. But um, uh, yeah, I think. Look, you know, uh, both personally and professionally. You know, on the personal side, you know, um, uh, we talked about travel. I love to travel. Um, you know, I I have uh, a son that's in college. Uh, at James Madison University, oh, studying nice. down there at my at my alma mater, which I'm very, as I can show you, I'm very proud of right here. <laughs> there you go, go Dukes. Uh, and then, um, uh, but and uh, and then a daughter that lives in Charlotte. And then um, for me, you know, I just, you know, I like enjoying, um, tra as I mentioned, traveling. I play a lot of golf. I'm not great, nice. so but I play. Um, I, I'm certainly in my winter um, season right now in terms of my capabilities at this point, but, uh, but I'll continue to work on that. But on the professional side, look, um, it's really important for me um, professionally and personally for that matter to make a difference, right? It's really important for me to know that um, I love change. I love making change. I love, you know, being innovative and, and driving uh, solutions. I love solving problems. Uh, and, you know, nothing makes me feel better than knowing that there's a business problem and we have a, the ability to, to solve for it. Um, Absolutely. You know, and that really gets me up and going each and every day. And this industry is just, uh, I love it. You know, fintech is just always, it's changing. And I always say, you know, the thing about you know, a lot of people don't like change. I love change. Um, you either, you know, change changes you or you change it. And Absolutely. so, um, you know, I embrace it. And, and so, yeah, I appreciate you asking the question. I think on a, you know, a personal note and professional note, that's kind of where my mind is. And um, I love what I do. That's awesome, Chip. And by the way, favorite golf course that you've played? What do you have? You have something there that, that, that is memorable? Well, that yeah, I it's, probably, it's probably the one I'm sitting on right now, which is um, up at Lake Toxway, North Carolina. Okay. Uh, private course up here at a country club up here. And uh, so, yeah, it's, it's probably the most beautiful golf course that I've ever played on. Really? Okay. So I'm um, hearing this as an invitation on camera from Chip to allow me to play this private course. There you go. Carolinas. I'm no good, Chip. I'm telling you, man, I'm working on it, <laughs> but it's, it's definitely a work in progress on the golf front. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you so much for the time. And uh, please, Keep it going. Love what y'all are doing over there, Sage. Thanks to me. Appreciate okay. it. Have a great one. Three key takeaways from this podcast. Number one, focus on value, not just features. In today's competitive market, it's crucial to understand that what your value of product or service truly offers to the customer. And our discussion highlighted the importance of going beyond simply listing features, but instead explaining how those features solve specific customer problems. Number two, the power of effective communication. Clear and concise communication is essential for success in any business. And the conversation emphasized the importance of actively listening to your clients, understanding their needs, and tailoring your message accordingly. This ensures that everyone is on the same page and it fosters trust and collaboration. And number three, embrace change and stay adaptable. The business landscape is constantly evolving, and the key takeaways from this dialogue suggest that businesses that can adapt to new trends and technologies will be the ones that thrive. Being open to learning will adjust your strategies and also give you a significant edge. Well, that's the Embedded uh, Podcast. If you found value in this episode, please leave us a five-star rating and subscribe to stay up to date on payments, software, and emerging technologies.